Welcome to another stream of Pods and God. I am Francisco, uh, and tonight we're going to be talking about essentially ghetto rigs. <laughs> this was a topic that uh, Geek Devotions, who's here in chat now, <laughs> suggested, and I thought it was uh, really clever, uh, just sort of giving you some uh, insight into the things I've done throughout my streaming and podcasting and God following career uh, to try to use what I have. Oh, found the girl. Use what I have to in order to do the things I'd like to do to entertain uh, you and anyone else who listens to the podcast or listens or watches the stream. Obviously, I need to go into that place, but it feels like a trap. That just feels too trappy right there. Anyway, so tonight we're going to be talking about that. Uh, Geek Devotions, a little irony of ghetto rigging being a tonight's topic, right? Right? Yes. Yeah, so we've been having some difficulties with my audio syncing and video, and it's uh, it's interesting. Interesting. But let's start off with talking about streaming. And uh, how can you, uh, what can you use already uh, to stream? to improve your stream that that's mainly the context for these these topics like essentially how can you macgyver your streaming your podcasting and your god following so let's start with streaming uh for me when uh, i was very fortunate because uh, i had a lot of i've said this before but i had lots of podcasting gear going into streaming so that helped a quite a bit i had a nice microphone had a mixing board and uh, a webcam I think I had a web, yeah, I had webcam then. So I had a lot of the niceties that you don't necessarily have going into uh, into streaming, but there were some things I definitely didn't have. Like, I don't think I really had a light setup so much. Uh, hey, thanks for the raid, fabulous Lomax. Tonight we're we're in the middle of our streams, pause, and God segment, and we're talking about ghetto rigs. Essentially, how you can make your uh, how you can stream or podcast or uh, share. Uh, the gospel with other people with maybe having very, very little to work with. So uh, we're talking about streaming right now. Uh, so glad you're here. Not going to be responding to chat too, too much during this time. But again, glad you guys are here. And hopefully you get something out of this. Uh, so streaming, I had some niceties from podcasting, but I didn't. My lighting situation was uh, not so good. So what I ended up getting was uh, I went to Fred Meyer, which is a store out here. You might have a a Walmart. I mean, you could probably find these things at Walmart or Target or something, but it's essentially this lamp that it has a metal shell. You put a bulb in it and it has a clamp on the end. So I think a lot of people use it for, you could use it for like uh, uh, your workshop or you, there's lots of uses for it. But, uh, but what I ended up using, I originally got these things for, uh, because I was going to make um, uh, Blu-ray uh, custom, uh, Blu-ray cases or custom covers for Blu-ray cases for games that you would buy online, and but you let's say you wanted a physical collection of the games, and I forgot to bring one these out so I could show you what they look like. But uh, in case you wanted to have, I was going to start printing these off, make my own custom art for these games you would buy online, so that you could actually have a physical case for them. But I bought these lights to use in this light box, which I also made myself. Uh, foam core and uh, some uh, tissue paper. Anyway, that's beside the point. So I had these lights lying around. I'm like, oh, well, you know what? Maybe I could, maybe I could use those to better light me, so I didn't have my just overhead or like room lights going, and you see everything. And so start off with that for streaming to get the light in a better place. And you saw some of that for a while. I had it right to my right here. Maybe it's to your left as you're seeing this, but uh, to my right is sort of beaming right at me, even with uh, tissue paper in front. Uh, my my brother Katek says very dramatic lighting because that's kind of all you can do with one light. So I, I had that, uh, and but that was me working with what I had. It was it was like I don't know, it cost me I don't know, between six and eight bucks. And then plus the light bulbs, which were like three bucks. So it didn't cost me that much. And I had it from doing this light box thing. I had it lying around. Now, another thing that I used a lot that I've had forever, this is like childhood. I mean, you, you probably have these. If you grew up around my time, uh, 80s, 80s, 90s, I'm sure you have some of these. 
Legos. Yes, Legos are amazing because you can use them for so many things. Um, originally, I was uh, before when I had when some of you may not remember this, but I used to stream point that way at that wall i would have my game going on up there essentially we have a projector instead of a tv so we would pre <laughs> we'd be projecting i'd be projecting the game up behind me and playing and so i'd have to have the webcam and i didn't have the computer to look at chat so i have chat on my phone and so i needed to have those in front of me and so what did i do well i put a chair in front of me but uh it wasn't really good to have it down on the chair. So what I did was I built a little contraption out of Legos so that essentially my phone sat on it like this when there's stabilizers and everything. And then a bit hooked around onto the, the rest of the chair where your back is leaning against. And so I built that out of Legos. Now, these days, and I'll probably be showing this in the, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see now um, I took those Legos and they're in parts. I don't have them anymore because I repurposed those Legos to, and actually in order to make a little stand for my webcam because uh, recently I bought uh, a second light. So that's why my lighting looks a lot more nice, a lot more nice, a lot more nicer now. English. Yeah. <laughs> looks nicer now uh, because I have two lights but for the ring light I wanted to have the my webcam be in the middle of it and I didn't want to spend 99 bucks on this type uh, type of tripod ring light setup that would allow for that so what did I do I bought a like eight buck eight buck eight dollar tripod from Ritz gear it's a Ritz camera tripod and then I bought a ring light that was like 18 bucks uh, at and I thought, well, okay, so I could buy like an L bracket thing that would probably be good for the, because the ring light would screw into the tripod, but then how do I get the camera to rest in, in the middle of that? Well, I, I did some measurements and I figured, okay, well, I could just, you know, I could probably just make that out of Legos. So I put together a Lego system. And uh, so you're probably seeing this now. Uh, essentially, it's just kind of like an L bracket. It's just something that can, goes in between the, uh, ring lights uh, joint that or the ring light part that screws into the tripod and then builds up so that the uh, webcam can rest on it. So again, just using what you have uh, around it, so that you don't have to use a bunch of money to invest in what you're doing. Do use what you have, MacGyver, MacGyver, MacGyver it uh, until you, you, you I mean, you can't, you have to upgrade, you have to do something to make things better or, or you've or you found that your stream is successful enough to uh, to allow for that i mean maybe and maybe you want to just have the best of the best right off the bat and that's fine if you feel comfortable investing in that that's fine for me i like to like you know test the waters is this really working well okay it's it's working good okay let's invest a little bit more okay oh okay that's working well invest a little bit more i like to be very like very deliberate in how i upgrade and how i make better uh, my stream. So those have been the main things I've used for upgrading my stream is Legos. Legos have been very invaluable for me. And also uh, like repurposing lighting that I've, or other th or things I've used for other purposes for the purpose of the stream, whether it's my podcasting equipment or lighting for light boxes or what have you. Uh, use what you have. Th sort of try to think outside the box. Like really, we, we, and we've done this, I think one of my first talks was about like, Consider the what you have at your disposal now, and uh, and that can really help you in terms of streaming. And pretty much the same thing follows into podcasting. So I've had a, a bit of a different experience with podcasting. So when when I first started podcasting, uh, I had this impression that you really needed to have a pop filter. Like you're you're a pro if you had a pop filter. <laughs> So what I did was I got I make sure I had a mic, good microphone, and this is the same microphone I've had since I first started. The, I'm sorry. I did have a little heads, headset microphone when I very, very first started podcasting. But when I started investing a little bit, I had the headset around. I guess that's a good example. Before I even knew, okay, am I really going to do podcasting? Well, okay, I have this headset. Let's use that. Let's see how that goes. Oh, I want to do this. Okay, let's invest, get a mic. Anyway. Mike, I've had since then. It's been awesome. Uh, 
but I wanted to I wanted to be a bit more pro. So I was like, okay, well, pop filters. I don't want to be popping my peas, especially since I'm new to podcasting. I don't have great mic technique, uh, and pop filter can help so that you don't hear the p- plosives. I mean, I have a windscreen now, so you don't hear it so well if you have good technique. But if I'm like right on it, p- p- I'm sure you hear a bunch of the air passing through. A pop filter helps a lot with that, and so I actually made this pop filter out of uh, an energy drink canister. I cut off the lid. I took an old sock, and I'll, I'll take it apart so you can sort of see how this is put together. If you ever want to make your own pop filter at home, I get like a, if you have a pro, if you have a protein shake jug or um, try you essentially need two parts, so like a, ba- a base part and a part that screws into the top. So. Essentially, yeah, I cut off the top part of the energy canister. Let's see if you can see that. And you can probably see the threads or whatnot. Maybe not. It's maybe too bright. Oh, well. And then you take the top part right here. And you take, this is just an old sock I cut out. Ideally, you want to use nylons, but my wife didn't have any nylons and I didn't have any nylons. Surprise, surprise. I know. Uh, So (laughs) I took an old, just black sock. You just sort of cover it over the top and watch. I won't be able to put this back together because I've never taken this apart since I first made it way back like, geez, at least seven years ago now. So you just sort of cover it, cover the top, put the screw over it and push it down until you can start screwing, screwing it back on. And that's probably never going to go back. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe I got it. Oh, yeah, I did get it. Oh, yes. Okay. So now you have a pop filter right there. And then you take a uh, old wire hanger bit and you sort of, you, you just sort of MacGyver it around the, the bottom base part until it holds it. And then you wrap the excess around your microphone in whichever way will hold it right in front of the microphone. So that's what eventually I got. I upgraded and actually bought a professional pop filter. And then I realized, you know what? For the for streaming, I actually want the mic to be a lot closer. And the overall setup, I just I think a windscreen will be, do me just fine. So that's why I went to. <laughs> it's too bright. Okay, thank you for letting me know, Fabulous. That is too bright to see the threads. But glad you got the idea. So we used uh, so. That is something I did. I had these things lying around, and I MacGyvered a pop filter for myself. I didn't have to buy anything. And going back one step to the to the ring light, I was looking into ways to just buy it to uh, make it out of Christmas lights and stuff. But the it just would have been way simpler for what I was doing and wanting to just buy it, especially at the price of eighteen bucks. That seemed very very reasonable for what I to get this level and I, there's like several modes and stuff so anyway sometimes macgyvering it you're just making a lot more work for yourself but sometimes it's what you need to do uh, let's see paul's asking dude how many podlings did you have to drain to fill a canister that big it wasn't actually a big canister it's only about that high but a lot a lot of podlings Go see the Dark Crystal episode if you're curious what he's talking about. Or listen to the Dark Crystal episode. Anyway, so uh, again, also use Legos for some uh, things in podcasting. Uh, Also, when I first started podcasting, I used uh, software that is already on my computer. So if you have software already or free software that you can get online, um, I'm sure there's lots of options now for podcasting. Back when I started, GarageBand was the main thing to go to use for a Mac. You could you can also get Audacity, which is free. So just trying to do little bits. I've since upgraded to Reaper, which I found has really stream streamlined my ability to edit podcasts. But it took a while to get to that point. I, it was like good five or six years. And then that was we did a Teespring campaign, uh, getting these shirts, which you can still get at Teespring. Uh, but that's what what uh, sort of was the impetus for buying a better audio program or audio editing program. But we started with what we had, uh, started with the software. Uh, I also, uh, I had, I have a boom arm. I'm not using it now because the, this mic stand that I have just works is better for what I, my purpose is. But I have a boom arm. But before that, I tried to actually jerry rig. This is one one place where MacGyver didn't work for me. I tried to, I went to Goodwill. I bought a, uh, 
an old desk lamp that had a sort of armature that you could sort of like, you know, the ones that have springs on them and they sort of collapse and bend and, and stuff. And I was like, okay, well I'll, I'll buy that. Then I'll take the light off and then I'll put the mic on it with some, with my excellent hardware and technical engineering know-how. Uh, I'll, I'll put that together. It never really worked out. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't actually, it may have worked out okay, but it's just like really, really rink a dink. <laughs> I mean, really, really rink a dink. So uh, eventually, I just I abandoned that. But that was when I was podcasting in a closet. It was a long time ago. So that leaves us with our last section, which is uh, what? How do you get a rig uh, talking about God? And this is I was like, how am I going to talk about this? And but. Uh, Gave it some thought. Geek Devotions helped me a bit with this. But uh, let's say uh, you feel, often I feel unequipped to really share God with other people. But uh, a lot of it is kind of resting in the spirit leading you and actually trusting that, okay, when you feel spirit led to say something, you should say it or say something. Uh, I think this has happened to me where sometimes I've like, I felt like uh, God's prayer saying, you got you to do something. You got to say something here. And I did, and it was really good. And then another time where I felt like you could have said something that would have been so simple and could have led to so much more conversation, and I totally didn't because I was fearful, and I was, just, I was sad that I didn't bring up this simple thing that could have opened the door to a bigger spiritual conversation. So listen to, I mean, if you're a Christ follower, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not, uh, it's okay. You can still listen to this and be like, what is he talking about? This sounds kind of weird. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, but yeah, if you're a Christ follower and you, you, I imagine a lot of you have felt this, felt those moments where it's like, I, uh, I feel like I should say something, but I don't really want to, or I'm not going to, or you talk yourself out of it, stuff like that. So that's one thing. Just be listening. Be ha be sensitive to the spirit in that way. Now, let's say you'd like to actually be more proactive, and you're not just waiting. Uh, I'd say something you could do is memorize stories from scripture. This was something we actually did for uh, in and youth when I uh, helped with our church's youth group, and we had this whole sort of. Uh, not semester, but the season where we are trying to memorize Bible stories. And there are, someone like came up with a whole format for what to do um, of trying to, uh, these were good stories to memorize that um, sort of pointed at the gospel in some way or pointed at Jesus in some way. And, uh, or were just interesting stories that I imagine a lot of them pointed to the gospel in some way. I can't remember exactly, but <laughs> Uh, we went through the season of trying to memorize Bible stories, and that was really good. I honestly, I have bits and pieces still stick with me, so that was a good experience. But I don't I haven't gone through the the um, process of continually saying them and speaking them, so they've lo faded from memory. Uh, so that's one thing: is just to have stories ready to share, um, so that when you go into certain contexts, if it makes sense to share a story from scripture, then you're equipped to do that. <laughs> yeah. Like chopping the baby in half. <sighs> oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> I don't, didn't remember that one. Uh, oh, Fabus reminds me of Dune fears the mind killer. That sounds familiar. I've never read Dune and I've only seen like the last 20 minutes of the, was it David Lynch or Cronenberg? I think it's Lynch, David Lynch's version of it. Uh, that's a good story all the time. Okay, Paul. Uh, another good story is the gospel itself, but I don't know if you guys are familiar with the acrostic. And this is this is a good thing. This is something that um, is just one more thing that's great to have in your memory banks of this acrostic of the gospel, which was put out by the Dare to Share Ministries and uh, the, uh, the uh, sort of a word poet. I think that's the way you call it. Propaganda put a whole video, made a whole video of this, but it's uh, God is God uh, is the creator of all. O is our uh, our sin separate us from God. L is, or uh, S sin uh, sin is something we can't pay. Or no no sin it keeps us separate from God. 
uh, P is payment, that we can never do enough to pay our, for our sins. Um, e is, or maybe payment is, see, now I, now I need to go back through this, but uh, E is everyone has, oh, every, oh, yeah, Jesus paid the price for our sins. Everyone has, E is everyone, everyone has access to a Jesus, and L is life. Uh, life starts now with Jesus and lasts forever. So that's a great acrostic to memorize. But lastly, let's say you're like, man, Francisco, I don't, I know you're saying memorize the Bible and memorize these, these uh, sayings and that'd be great and all, but I just, I haven't done any of that. And I, I still would want to share something. What could I share? Well, you know what, you know who, you know, probably better than most people. Me? No. <laughs> you. You, of course, you. And so just share your testimony about how how Christ uh, found you and impacted you. I'll share mine real quick. It's it's kind of a th in three parts. <laughs> uh, I first feel like uh, God uh, spoke to me in a vacation Bible school where I was making this craft, where I was drying out this cross, uh, making a little craft for my mom, I think. And I just, I felt the beauty of God in that moment. And then later on, I went, I was raised Presbyterian, so I went to confirmation class where you sort of confirm that you've committed yourself to Christ and learning about God and gain a bunch of the sort of head knowledge, history of the church and stuff. That was very helpful. Oh, head knowledge at a very low level. I mean, I was like 12 or 13, so I didn't get that much, but I really felt like, yes, I know I've committed. God is the way, but as I lived out the rest of my teen years and into college, I don't feel like I, I mean, so I, my, I said one thing and did another. So I was, had this duality, which wasn't great, but in college I met this guy. I mean, he's, he's okay and all, but he's named Paul Powers. I, I mean, it might be him the chat. I don't know, but I felt like my faith was really grounded during that time in college because him and I would have these deep um, conversations about God and geekdom and, and the intersection of both. And is I felt like some of those conversations really were super formative for solidifying my faith in, in Christ and that, yes, the, this is who I'm going to follow the rest of my life. So uh, that that's my testimony. And so sharing that. And uh, you may be like, well, but for instance, I was raised in the church, so I don't have this like I was on drugs and then I'm not on drugs and it's amazing and God totally changed my life. And, you know, I kind of feel that way sometimes, too. But we're all fallen. You, you may have heard this already, but I need the reminder. So I'm going to tell myself, Francisco, you're fallen and God saved you. You were dead and you are alive. And that's amazing, regardless of how it happened. Okay. So be thankful, yo. <laughs> okay. So uh, to recap, I, I was thinking this stream was going to be like two minutes. <laughs> there wasn't a lot to it, but I think I went on quite a bit there. Uh, get a rig. Get a rigs for streaming. Use what you have, whether uh, you're just getting into streaming. Uh, let's say you only have a PlayStation 4 and buy a microphone, and that's all. You can, you can do it. You can stream through with that. I've been told I don't have that, so you can tell me if I'm wrong. But that's what I've been told that you can do. Or uh, if you're podcasting, you know what? All, if all you have is a headset mic and and some free software, well, get started that way. So that way you know whether these are things you want to continually invest in uh, if you're not sure. Uh, or if you're just like, oh, man, I really want to get things better, but I don't have the money for it. Uh, uh, I'll, okay, I'll make something out of Legos and that'll just be enough because I have Legos because Legos are amazing. None of this Mega Block stuff, Legos. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know what we're talking about. I'm not a, a purist. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. And for, uh, <laughs> for sharing your faith, it, it'd be great if you have Bible stories memorized or, um, or sort of a great sort of condensation, uh, sort of summary of the gospel, but really if all you have is your story of how you are saved, uh, then that's, I think God can use that 
in abundance. So thank you everyone for listening to this long stream of Spas and God. If you like this uh, and you're watching this on YouTube, please like, uh, smash that like button. Like right now, just like hit it hard with a click of the button. I guess if you have a touch screen, you can tap it. That works too. I want to break your phone screen. Don't, don't break it because you're hanging it so hard. But uh, like it. Uh, you could share this with others. If you have uh, fellow believers that are trying to make content that you think would find this valuable, please share it with them. Uh, and if you're new to the Retro Rewind podcast channel, uh, please subscribe. We're trying to get to 100 so we can change the name to Retro Rewind Pod to be consistent with all our other things. <laughs> Thanks. And uh, until next time, shalom.